That's it, everybody. Now, here's the boogie woogie, solid beat. Come on, you dancers, on your feet. The winners get surprised, as you all know, and we pick them by the speed and the class they show. Let's go! <laughs> I've always been particularly fascinated in the swing era because, it, to me, it represents a point when jazz became a popular music. Well, swing music was a happy feeling. It was a definite beat. Swing freed dance music from the control of publishers. And why they call it the swing band was because it would make people swing, make them pat their feet, and they wanted to dance. I think the essence of swing music came from the drum. Swing that music, Louis Armstrong had exalted in one of his earlier compositions, and Duke Ellington echoed him with, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Some 15 or more years, it was the American popular music form, catching hold of the new optimism already burgeoning after the Depression years, and translating it into a music that so captured the public imagination and mood of the time that it lent its name to an era. Spawned in Kansas City and territories to the south and west at the end of the 20s, Swing's early ambassadors were the so-called territorial bands. One of the best known of these was the Eleven Clouds of Joy, led by former tuba player Andy Kirk. When you speak of territorial bands, there were different types, see, and they, uh, you were hired for your certain thing, your certain style, and uh, there were a variety of styles all the way from, uh, well, in those days, we played from Texas to, uh, up to Minnesota. And we'd book uh, a few dates between Kansas City and Chicago, like Hannibal, Missouri, Springfield, uh, Illinois, and LaSalle, Illinois, work up, and we work back to Kansas City. A contemporary of Kirk's, who worked in many territorial bands, including that of Alfonso Trent, was Snub Mosley. I think that the uh, Texas and Kansas City bands well, really, some of the, uh, they were the first. Yes, there was a definite influence from the Kansas City guys, which I think started even before Basie with people like uh, Benny Moten. We want to keep this in mind, too, that dancing was about the only pleasure. And there were many dance halls uh, in throughout the South, many small dance halls, medium size halls and large dance halls. Just to give you an idea how much the bands enjoyed playing for the people, I know they knew our records, what records we had, and so they'd asked for certain tunes. It was a group that used to come right around the band and they say, play so and so, they know the tunes. So I'd ask them, I'd say, where do you want it, man? So they'd pat it off, the tempo they wanted. So, and that knocked me out. 